Ever picked up a handful of coins and wondered why they don't all feel the same? Some are heavier, some have a different color, and others seem to wear down faster. Well, there's a reason for that. Coins aren't made of just one metal. Instead, they're crafted from carefully chosen metal alloys. But why go through all that trouble? Why not just use pure gold, silver, or even copper? Turns out there's a lot more to coin making than meets the eye. Let's break it all down right here on History of Simple Things. Once upon a time, coins were made of pure metals like gold, silver, and copper. Sounds fancy, right? But there was a big issue. Pure metals are either too soft, too expensive, or just not practical. Take gold and silver, for example. These metals are soft enough that they wear down quickly in circulation. Imagine a coin getting thinner every time it's used. Before long, it would just disappear. Not to mention using gold for everyday transactions wouldn't exactly be cost-effective. Imagine paying for a coffee with a chunk of solid gold. Definitely not convenient. Copper had its own problems. While it's more affordable than gold or silver, it's still relatively soft and can corrode over time, turning green when exposed to moisture and air. That's why coin makers started looking for better options. They needed something strong, affordable, and long-lasting. To fix these issues, coin makers started using metal alloys. An alloy is just a mix of two or more metals to create something stronger and more durable. By blending different metals, you get the best of both worlds. Harder, longer-lasting coins that don't cost a fortune to make. But choosing the right alloy isn't just about strength. It also has to resist corrosion, be easy to mint, and even have the right weight to prevent counterfeiting. For example, a coin made entirely of copper would be too soft, but mix it with a bit of nickel, and suddenly, you've got a much tougher material that holds up over time. Plus, nickel gives the coin that shiny, silver-like appearance that people associate with money. And that's just one combination. Different countries use different blends depending on their needs and available resources. So what metals actually go into our everyday coins? Let's break it down. Copper, one of the most commonly used metals. It's cheap, durable, and resists corrosion. But on its own, it's too soft, so it's often mixed with other metals. Nickel, adds strength and a shiny silver color. Many modern coins have nickel in their composition to make them harder and give them that familiar metallic luster. Zinc, lightweight and inexpensive, often used as a core material and then coated with other metals. Aluminum, super light and resistant to rust, often used in countries that need low-cost coin production. Silver and gold, mostly used for collectible or commemorative coins these days. These metals were common in the past, but their high value makes them impractical for everyday use. Some countries even use bimetallic coins, coins with two different metals layered together. These are not just for looks, they also help prevent counterfeiting and make the coins easier to identify by touch. You might have noticed that different denominations of coins often have different metals. That's intentional. Different alloys help people distinguish coins by touch sight, and weight. For example, higher value coins are often made with more durable materials, so they last longer in circulation. Smaller value coins, on the other hand, might be made of cheaper metals to save costs. Another important factor, counterfeiting prevention. If all coins were made from the same material, it would be much easier to fake them. By using unique metal compositions, 
governments make counterfeiting a lot harder. Some coins even have multi-layered metals or special electromagnetic properties that machines can detect to verify authenticity. Have you ever noticed that some old coins look completely different from the ones we use today? That's because the metals used in coins change over time, often due to economic reasons. When metal prices go up, governments sometimes have to find cheaper alternatives. A great example of this is the U.S. penny. Before 1982, pennies were mostly made of copper, but copper prices soared, so they switched to a zinc core with just a thin layer of copper on the outside. It saved millions. Similar changes have happened worldwide. The British pound coin, for instance, was once made of nickel and brass, but was later changed to a bi-metallic design with a more complex structure to prevent counterfeiting. In some cases, coins have even been discontinued entirely because the metal became too expensive. With digital payments becoming more popular, you might wonder, will physical coins even exist in the future? Probably, but they might look a little different. Some countries are already exploring coins with electronic chips embedded inside for security and tracking. Others are testing ultra-lightweight alloys or even fully recyclable materials. The goal is to make coins even more durable, cost-effective, and environmentally friendly. In some cases, the shift away from cash has already led to fewer coins being minted. But as long as people still rely on physical money, whether for vending machines, public transport, or small transactions, there will be a need for well-designed, long-lasting coins. So, the next time you hold a coin, remember, it's not just a piece of metal. It's a carefully engineered mix of science, economics, and history, designed to last and function in our daily lives. Whether it's made of copper, nickel, or even something futuristic, coins will always be more than just spare change. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.